Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Rush Street Interactive stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Rush Street Interactive operates online casinos in several US states with 115,000 monthly active users. The company is headquartered in Chicago was founded in 2012. It went public via a SPAC in 2020 and trades on the New York Stock Exchange. A SPAC is a fast track way of getting through an IPO process. A normal IPO process is expensive and lengthy, but companies can IPO quicker and cheaper using a SPAC. The company started with a social gaming site called Sugar House Casino for Fun. Then in 2016, it launched an online gaming casino site, PlaySugarHouse.com in New Jersey. In 2018, it added sports gambling to its website. The company also supports online gambling and sports betting for Rivers Casino in Pittsburgh, also Rivers Casino in Philadelphia and Schenectady. It also supports French Lick Casino in Indiana. It was the first US gaming company to launch a regulated online gaming sports book in Latin America. There are a lot of shady online casinos that don't pay taxes, but this company is legit, it follows the rules and it pays taxes. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 2.7 billion market cap. They're trading at 1254 a share and they have 219 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they had negative free cash flow in 2019 but already in 2020, they have positive free cash flow. It usually takes companies many years to get positive free cash flow, but in the first year they're public, they already have 10 million of free cash flow. They only had 1 million in a trailing 12 months. They were probably investing a lot back into their business to grow it. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was negative in 2019 and 20, positive in a trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company and their growth is amazing from 64 million to 279 million and their trailing 12 months is even greater at 355 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue and revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. They have positive gross profit every year. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are marketing and depreciation and their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit. So they have negative operating income each year. Then below that is the interest they pay in their debt, which is pretty low. They don't have much debt. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was positive in the trailing 12 months, negative in 2020 and 2019. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates or loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. And it's pretty exciting. They generated over $16 million of cash flow in 2020. That dropped to 8 million in a trailing 12 months. But just back in 2019, they had negative operating cash flow. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they had 10 million of free cash flow in 2020, 1.2 million in a trailing 12 months. It was negative in 2019. Also to help grow the business, they've been issuing capital stock. They issued 15 million in 2019, six and a half million in 2020. When a company issues capital stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. Let's look at the capital structure, $98 million of equity, $1 million of debt. So they're 99% equity, 1% debt. Their net debt is negative 411 million. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have over $400 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 10% and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 993 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $778 million. We divide that by 219 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 355. They're trading at 1254, so they're trading at a 253% premium. It is a sell according to the model. 
The way I estimated my future free cash flows, I used my most aggressive model. My most aggressive model looks at their past financial information and assumes a significant growth rate based off of their financials. So of course, no one really knows the future of this company or any company. If you feel their stock is worth $20, $30 a share, then $12.54 is a bargain. But if you feel the stock is $4, $5, $6 a share, then you wouldn't buy it. You would wait for the stock to go down before buying it. If you had a $100 bill, no one would pay more than $100 for that bill. Many people would pay $99 for it, but no one would pay $101 for it. But a stock is different. The value of a stock is the perception of the individual investor. Everybody has their own perception on this company and this industry. Six analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $21. The low was 18, the high was 25. This is their stock price since it started trading. When the stock was flat, it was probably trading as a SPAC. But when news came out of the SPAC acquiring Rush, that's when the stock price was driven up. When there's exciting news about a company or a SPAC, the stock price gets inflated and then people sell off. That's why the stock price is going down. It may make sense to wait for the stock price to go down further, but you don't know when the bottom is. This could be the bottom and the stock price could go up to $100 later on this year. All states in purple have online casinos and online sports betting. All states in light blue have only sports betting. If there's a circle in that state, that means they're doing live gambling. All the states in red means the company has agreements in place to possibly run casinos there. In 75% of the U.S. states, it's either legal or there's plans to become legal, sports gambling, and online casinos. This stock went up 29% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P 500 went up 41%. The 52-week low was $10, the high was $27. And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 1.5 to 2 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 219 million shares outstanding, 52 million are on float, 66% are held by institutions, and 8% of the shares on float are shorted. In the past 90 days, this stock has gone down 36%, while its industry went down 5%, and the market went up 1%. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to decrease 46%, its industry to increase 47%, and the market to increase 15%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 23%, its industry 22%, and the market 9%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you could have more than doubled your money at one point. But if you're still holding, you're at $12,800 today. That's a 29% total return. Their biggest shareholder is Harry Yu, who owns the SPAC that IPO'd this company. He owns 10.7% of the stock. Next is FMR, Alliance Bernstein, Times Square Capital Management, and Eagle Asset Management. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 222.5, so investors are paying $222 for $1 of earnings. That's a really bad P.E. ratio. Price to sales is 7.7, .7, which is between the median and average. Price to book is 27.9. And the way you calculate price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have $98 million of equity, $87 million of tangible equity, because they have 11.6 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. The way a company gets intangible assets on its balance sheet is when they acquire another company. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. Their ROE is 12.5%, which is a good ROE. They have a really high current ratio, so they can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are mainly cash of $364 million. So the company is well capitalized. They have $352 million of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. And they did have positive free cash flow. So they have over $350 million of funding. They may want to use some of this money to acquire other businesses. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on DraftKings and Golden Nugget, both in the same industry as Rush. And if Rush has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. Rush is the only company that has positive earnings, so the other companies we can't look at their PE. Rush has the best price to sales ratio. Rush is the only company we can look at the price to book because the other two companies have negative book value. Rush has the highest current ratio 
and Rush has almost no debt. The other companies are 100% debt. Of the three companies, DraftKings is the largest, Rush is in the middle. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 253% premium, but I think this company has a lot of potential. Especially if they open up in more states and keep growing their revenue at this rate, they're going to do really well. And people love gambling. Some people don't want to drive to a casino, and some people can drive to a casino because it's too far. I do think they're overvalued at this point, but if you hold this stock for many years, you might have a great return. I rank their free cash flows 3 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.